If there's one thing about Cartoon Network that's heavily disputed now more than ever, it's the matter of its identity. I mean, it came onto the scene 20 plus years ago with Warner Bros. and MGM properties ready to preach the word of classic cartoons. Now it's giving us a lot of original content that many would bogart squarely for the 6 to 11 demographic. Maybe even younger. There's plenty of shows and properties that have determined the faces of its identity, but oftentimes I wonder which one has the best sense of self. Adventure Time and Regular Show are still lauded today for their wide-sweeping adventures and complex shades of maturity amidst their silliness. Teen Titans Go! and The Amazing World of Gumball are the arbiters of the channel's comedic vibes and are considered clever beyond compare. Steven Universe and Infinity Train were known to be as emotionally intuitive as they are narratively satisfying. But if I had to pick which cartoon knows itself intrinsically and harnesses that to its greatest potential, it would have to be We Bear Bears. Rather recently, the movie dropped in our collective laps, and many did not give it the time of day. As of late, the show hasn't been given the best rerun track to hype this up, and many would arguably forget about its looming presence. A scan promotional campaign was initiated by playing a modified version of the trailer in between ad breaks. They also started airing the show again, but not with any major fanfare. They didn't even get every digital platform to release the thing according to schedule. Either way, no matter how much it's been hyped up, we gotta talk about it. The movie is pretty much the quintessential We Bear Bears movie. Not necessarily the most succinct, but definitely what I'd come to expect from it. As you know by now, the premise is the bear's journey to find freedom in Canada after their antics finally push the humans to their limit and chase them out of town. It's an emotional little road trip journey where the trio tries to rediscover themselves and find new horizons along the way. It has a rather generic catalyst, but I don't think the story would fit any other show like it does this one. Narratively, it throws you a lot of softballs right up until the third act. The last 15 to 20 minutes especially gets really, really dark. I can't even really convey to you the extent of how hard they went in. The best thing about it is that it doesn't try to convey this as some big action movie premise. Like, this, this stuff happens every day. It's an incredibly humanistic experience. In the vein that this follows well into the series structure, this expertly mimics the various circumstances one would follow through in real life. The cyclical nature of the main story is arguably its biggest strength. The movie didn't get much of a visual upgrade. The poster's pretty epic, but everything from the background design to the props look like they're straight out of the show. You could say this was due to the budget, but I mean, nah, I don't know. Steven Universe the movie, with the show having its budget slashed by that point, thanks to the wedding, you know the one, looked at least like a TV movie with big ass stakes. Maybe this is intentional, but it's an interesting thing to take note of. The thing's also a bit of a musical, which is cool, I mean, we didn't really get that in the show proper, but it's, it's a little distracting for me. The pacing was already a little bit too weird, uh, so to pivot into the occasional musical number was already taking me out of the action sometimes. Far be it from the be-all, end-all, it's just a little thing to keep in mind. As you might know by now, this movie got pushed back to the end of the month because well, 2020 is a horrible year, and without getting into it, many at Turner probably didn't feel like it was the right time. Now, this is going to sound a bit wild, but uh, I'm almost a little disappointed that they pushed it back. I mean, it was probably in better taste, right? But the movie is very much what people need to see. Not even in relation to what's going on outside, but in conjunction with what the show means, like its central message. We Bear Bears laid out its existential crisis for all to see, and for the love of God, you gotta see it. A few years ago, specifically after the last presidential election, the creator of We Bear Bears, Daniel Chong, posted this to his Twitter. It's a simple three paragraph spread about what the show means and essentially sets the stage for what the movie would go on to convey. You can watch these well-meaning animals get browbeaten by society over and over again, but they continue to be loving and accepting. 
These bears are marginalized and pushed away by the outer bounds of the world, but they always bounce back. It's a message that becomes much harder to ignore, especially with everything going on right now. But I think it's especially important that it ran during such a tumultuous period in history, because it was at the forefront of it. Overall, I think Blue Bear Bears the movie is one of the best bookends we could have gotten. This is more or less the end of the line for the bears. The baby spinoff, We Baby Bears, is set to touch down sometime this year, and being a prequel series, this is the last we'd probably see of the current bears regularly. A fair amount of the crew that drove the direction of the original show have moved on to bigger and better, and we can only hope that the bear legacy will be well reciprocated. I think it's considered one of Cartoon Network's big five franchises, uh, the ones that get passed around in marketing a lot, so it'll definitely live out financially, but I hope people remember it to be a bastion of change amidst all the patterns it set up. It's amazing for however long it was gone for periods of time, it wouldn't show up on the schedule or in seasonal promotions, but it's always been great to know that in the back of our minds, they'd be there. <laughs>